Uh, hi everyone, how's it going? I'm Max. I just uh, flew in this week from Berlin to give this demo. I'm very excited uh, to be here, first time in SF. Um, and I'm here representing N8N today. I joined N8N about four years ago as a first founding designer. And last week about I transitioned into DevRel, so this is my very first demo. And I'm really excited to show you a lot of the AI uh, functionality we've been working on in our workflow automation product. So my talk is on supercharging automated workflows with AI, and I promise you I don't have a single slide to show you other than this one. We're gonna stay in the product the whole time, we're gonna build, we're gonna show you what n 8 is all about. So what is N8N? N8N is a low-code automation platform for technical teams. Um, there's a lot of workflow automation products on the market, right? But I think what differentiates us, it's not a single feature, it's really about who we're designed for. So we're designed for people who know how to code. You don't have to be a, uh, an expert to have, you know, uh, get value from the product, but we really give you the options and all the settings and all the things that you expect when you're uh, working with code. So to give you a really simple example here, um, there's steps on a canvas. Each step executes. It outputs data and passes that along to the next step, right? So in this really simple example, if I open up my webhook trigger and copy the test URL, if I test this workflow and I open up, let's say, a new tab, and let's say we pass along uh, a URL parameter, we see the workflow executed, right? So if I double click my webhook trigger and I pop over the schema view here, we can see I have access to all the raw data that came in from that webhook. Maybe that's useful, maybe it's not, but it's for you to decide. In this case, it's this email uh, variable here that I need to access in my if node. I drag and drop it. I set up a condition. I have all the various things I might expect uh, to work with, like data types and whatnot, right? We call things a Boolean uh, because that's what it is. Um, and we see here this routed out to the true branch. We executed some arbitrary JavaScript. We added uh, something to Postgres. And if this wasn't the case, if the email had not been at N8N or hadn't included N8N, we might send a Slack message. So to give you an example, we have hundreds of different apps that we connect with natively, and we have generic connectors, right, for HTTP requests, uh, FTP, all the various protocols that you might need to connect to. So you might be asking me, Max, I don't see any AI here, right? So this is what N8N has been doing for about the last four years, is providing a workflow automation product and now we've added an abstraction of Langchain to allow you to build uh, far more sophisticated uh, AI workflows. And I think for us, what we're realizing and seeing is that um, by adding AI to a traditional workflow automation product, there's a lot more use cases that become uh, feasible. And we have a lot of maturity in a lot of the things that maybe some of our competitors might not have yet since they started off as an AI native tool. So in the first example, Let's build an automation that categorizes emails coming into this inbox based on two labels, either automation or music. So the first step I'll do is we need to start this workflow when I get something in my Gmail inbox, right? So I'll go to Gmail here, and we'll add a trigger event when a message is received. Okay, so I already have a credential set up in here. If I need to create a new one, I could. Uh, this is a poll-based trigger. Many of our triggers are event-based. This one's poll-based, so we handle all the deduplication under the hood. And in this case, I don't want to simplify the output. So let's fetch a test event. This is going to bring in the latest email. Again, I'm seeing all the raw data that I'm getting from the Gmail API. If I collapse this, I can see I have the email itself here. So this is what we want to analyze um, and classify. So in the next step, what we're going to use is one of our brand new text classifier nodes, and this is one of our advanced AI nodes. So this is an abstraction on Langchain. So like in Langchain, I have various dependencies I might need to connect to this. Um, but before I do that, let's set up the, the parent node itself. So there's various parameters to fill out here. There's the text to classify. For this, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop the text. And we can see we've created an expression in N8N. And we can see there's the result of that item coming in there. What I might want to do as well is also pipe in the subject. Maybe that's useful context. So we can do that as well. And now we've got the subject and the title. I could, of course, if I need to, apply various methods to it. Um, we have helper functions, but also uh, plain JavaScript. 
Um, but in this case, I don't need to do any of that. So uh, the next step would be to define the categories that I want to classify by, right? So for the first one, I want to do automation. For the prompt itself, let's just copy paste that so you don't have to see me awkwardly typing that out. So what we see here is a very simple description, right? Nothing too complicated. We'll do the same for, for music. And I'll paste that in as well. Okay, and if I wanted to, again, and it then has a lot of options for you. We progressively disclose those if you need them, but if I needed to also um, maybe have a different output when we don't know what's happening, I could do that as well. And now we see we've created all these different output branches. So the dependency here is a model. As you can see, we have various different models that we support here. This list is growing every day, self-hosted models, et cetera. Uh, NADN is also fully self-hostable. We have users running on a Raspberry Pi. We have users running in the cloud. So you could totally run everything you're seeing here today on-prem if that's important for you. So in this case, I'll use ChatGPT or an open AI model. Since it's a demo, let's go with the brightest and best for now. And again, there's lots of options here, right? So maybe I'm an enterprise and I have my own cluster. I can easily change the base URL there. Maybe let's turn down the sampling temperature a little bit. Okay, so let's see if this works. Let's run that. And we got something coming out, the automation branch here. This email is about automation. We'll do a test afterwards, so you can check me on that. And then uh, this last step, I just need to add a Gmail step. Uh, we want to add the automation label. Move that here. And then for the message ID, we're feeding in data from before in my workflow, again, here. We'll duplicate this for the music step. We'll change this to music. And so now, this workflow, if I, um, if I check my inbox here, let's send a new email. Send that. Okay, so this is about music, right? It's about a disco edit. Let's uh, clear this. Let's run the workflow. And we're just gonna stop this real quick. And we're gonna pause this trigger here. And then if I run it again, it's pulling in the latest test event. Now again, once I activate this workflow, this would work automatically. And we see this was routed to the music branch. And we apply the music label. So that's text classification in a few minutes. Now I have a uh, rag example as well. I'm looking at the clock, we got about two minutes left. So I'm gonna run through this really quick because there's a really cool thing I wanna show you in a little bit here. But basically, with this example, I've got the BTC white paper. We're gonna run this. This is handling text embeddings and inserting this into Pinecone as a vector. Those are in Pinecone now. Again, showing traditional steps like downloading a file with the uh, AI capabilities. And then in this part, with our chat trigger, if I ask what is the first reference in the Bitcoin white paper, it's gonna answer this. Now, what, when did the ETH white paper come out? This is something that GPT-4 would know, right? Most likely. Ours doesn't because we have guardrails set up that we want it to just use the vector store itself which is important when you're building something uh, for a production environment where you want to control the results, right? So that's something that NNN helps you do. So in the last 60 seconds, I'm going to show you a, our brand new feature, which allows our AI agents to interact with uh, tools. And the tool that we've added now is the ability to teach your agent to interact with any arbitrary REST endpoint and define the parameters that it can control with placeholders and the things that it cannot control. Again, guardrails. So if I run this, um, let's say, can I make an appointment for this Friday? Let's see, certainly this Friday would be this. To proceed, I'll need the following information. Okay, 
when is max available? Let's see. In this case, I'm using an anthropic model, but again, you could swap that out under the hood. So we have the availability times. Let's see. Um, can I book an appointment for 9 a.m.? Now, I haven't given the full name and email address yet. Agents handling this all under the hood. So my name is Nathan Automator. And my email is nathanautomator at gmail.com. And now, so we used the first tool, which was to check the availability. And now this second tool is consuming the endpoint to create an event. And so we book that. If I check in my calendar, we can see that um, we've booked a meeting between Nathan and Max right there. Um, so in short, um, this is a very simple example, right? But you have multiple various tools that uh, this agent could use. And just to give you an idea, this is just one of the tools, right? There's off-the-shelf ones, or you can even call an edit and sub workflow. So hundreds of integrations that we have, you can start having your uh, agent interact with those as well, be it something that's off-the-shelf like a SaaS tool or something proprietary that's on your own uh, local infrastructure. <laughs>so what's happening in this example right this is the ai step this is what's handling my my fuzzy semantic language this step here and this step here are things that we've had in it in for a couple years and this is a standard action so as you can see here this is the gmail node as we call it in init n it's operating on the message resource the operation is add label and exactly under the hood we're interacting with the gmail api as abstraction for you now Let's say we didn't have Gmail, or let's say we didn't have your you know, proprietary app. You could do the same thing with an HTTP request node, or an SFTP node, or any sort of protocol that you need to interact with. SSC events, etc. Yep. Sure, so Gen AI of workflows themselves is on our roadmap. Um, one of the squads that I'm actually involved with right now is working on an AI assistant. That's not going to be the very first task that we launch with. Okay. Um, to be honest, we did some POCs on um, uh, handling that, and we saw a lot more value from helping uh, users solve the errors that they're doing in building their workflows. Um, but that is something on our roadmap. Most likely, it won't be a type a single prompt and build out a whole workflow. We see that with some of our competitors, um, and we've tested it, and I think the results for many users are a bit suboptimal right now. So uh, when we approach that, I think uh, where we're going to explore is probably step by step, you know, describing the next step in the workflow. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's on our roadmap. Yeah, so the, the app that uh, you're seeing right now, this is NAN. So this is our workflow automation tool. Um, it's source available, so you can self-host it, you can fork it, you can tweak it, uh, et cetera. So right now today, uh, when I talk about AI, um, it, we sort of segment it right now. There's this advanced AI category. These are these sort of um, chains that you're seeing with dependencies. It is an abstraction of Langchain today. The way it's been set up from day one, though, that's just one of the frameworks that we're using. So in future, as the space evolves, we can swap in other frameworks under the hood. So yes, this right now is an abstraction of Langchain, but a future text classifier in NNN or one that you build yourself as a custom node, for example, we have docs for you to build your own nodes, it doesn't necessarily have to be. So I would say in terms of um, observability, let's have a look, we do have logs, for example, when you're working on this, that's not necessarily going to catch you know, if something at scale is, is happening wrong for a certain subset of your user base, that's not tooling that we would have in NNN today. That is something that we're assessing. But I would say when you're building your workflow, uh, and this happens a lot in NNN, it depends what uh, you want to catch for. So right now, the way this chat trigger works, and again, this is just a chat trigger. This could be a webhook. This could be any arbitrary you know, way that's starting this. Um, it's responding with the the output of this because it's the last step. But I could have an if node, 
I could check for certain criteria. We also have agents where you can output a certain schema. You can validate that schema. If that's invalid, you could route to something traditional. You could send a static message. Oh, sorry, something went wrong. We're, te we're texting a human, if that's what makes sense for your use case. Or you could have a multi-agent approach. Maybe here you have GPT 3.5 because it handles 90% of the cases, and then when it fails, you're routing it to an expensive model um, because you want, because it's really important that it gets it right. So what you do exactly depends on your use case, but I would say in NA and the way it's structured, there's usually a flexible way to get that done and where you're not sort of locked in like most no-code tools, and that's why I would say the reason why we call ourselves a low-code product. So, so it depends. What I would say is for things that we see you know, on a bell curve, a lot of people wanting to do, we add a more opinionated node for that. The text classifier is a great example of that. The text classifier node did not exist two weeks ago because we saw a lot of people wanting to do that. The limitation of the text classifier node is that it's mutually exclusive. Only one of the options can be chosen. If you needed to choose all of them, there's an example on our template library that shows a more generic node where we set up a few more settings. So I would see over time, the things that most folks want to do most often, there will be an opinionated node for it, if there isn't already today, um, but you're not locked in if something you're trying to do kind of falls outside of that bound.